Dear Internet, today I found out I was cheated on in my marriage 14 years ago. I confronted her and I 35M am married to my wife 37F for 11 years and together for 14. We have a beautiful 7 year old daughter and our marriage has been great without any major problems until last year. What happened last year is that I learned that my wife cheated on me before our marriage. One of her friends became religious and confessed her actions to me which had me confront my wife. She was shocked that I learned it and apologized profusely about her actions. However, she said it's not something important now because we've been going strong and have a family together. She told me I should come to terms with it since it happened, four months into being exclusive and she was a stupid girl out of college back then. My mind told me the same. It happened 14 years ago and we are happy right now. I decided to forgive her and continue our usual life. Reality was not that great. My mental health took a big hit. I realized it's not something that happened 14 years ago for me. The cheating happened for me when my wife confirmed it. I was less confident, could not sleep with my wife, I just could not get an erection for her. This turned into feeling disgusted being around her. I even took a DNA and STD test secretly. Thankfully, our daughter is mine and I am clear of STDs. Then, a year of intense individual therapy started for me. I realized I needed to change somehow. I was not the same person I used to be. I also communicated my feelings to my wife and after pushing a bit, we started going to couples counseling too. However, at the end of everything, I decided to proceed with the divorce. Here are my reasonings. 1. She not only cheated back then, but lied to me for 14 years. She did not confess the action herself. Even though she apologized, she dismissed the fact by saying it's not important anymore. 2. Young me was robbed of having a choice. Cheating was, and still is, one of the biggest deal breakers for me. If I knew it back then, I would have broke it off. I am happy with my life, and I am glad that our daughter came to this world. She is the light that shines the brightest for me. One of the biggest reasons I keep living, but I was still robbed of a choice back then. 3. Individual counseling and marriage counseling could not solve our problems and my feelings towards her. It also started affecting my family life, which could affect our daughter. I think our daughter would be better off having us as co-parents instead of living in a broken family environment where consistent arguments are present. And 4. Life in the bedroom is basically dead for me. We do make love, but I feel like those women on films or TV series that just lay there and look at the ceiling waiting for it to be over. The only difference is that I am a man. Man. I do not even want non-sexual gestures anymore. Last week, I had a sit down with my wife and explained everything I wrote here in detail. My feelings, reasonings, and some other private things. I have been talking to a lawyer for the last month and papers are almost finalized. 50-50 custody, 50-50 asset sharing, and as amical as possible. I explained everything thoroughly and clearly to her. She freaked out and had a panic attack. We spent the night at the ER. She is begging me to reconsider and not throw away 14 years. However, even though I would like to stay, it will result in us being roommates and a broken family environment for our daughter. Am I in the wrong here? Now here are some relevant comments. One user said, this is tough. On one hand, I wouldn't break it up over this specific instance, but your feelings are valid and you make great points regarding how she lied by omission and withheld that choice from you for 14 years. Did you communicate to her that you now resent her and are no longer attracted to her and can't perform because of what she did? Then OP replied with, yes, I did communicate both during marriage counseling and one-on-one -on -one discussions. But it's not even being able to perform. The bad thing is, I do not even want to hug or hold hands anymore. Being present around her is uncomfortable too. Then user 2 said, Dang, I'm sorry to hear that. If the pain and hatred is that strong, then there isn't much point in staying. I'm assuming personal therapy didn't help you overcome that pain and hatred? I would not say hatred, but just uncomfortable. Therapy did not help so far for that feeling. It solved my initial anger and I came to terms with the reality, but that's it. Then then user 3 said, It was before you were married, but was it before you were officially a couple? If you had not declared yourself a couple yet, it's not really fair at all. If you were, that's a really tough one. Most likely, it would be a deal breaker for me. It was about 4 months into being an exclusive couple, so it's not before being boyfriend and girlfriend. Then OP elaborated on the cheating incident and said, It happened on a girl's trip they went together. It was confirmed by my wife. Her friend told me she could not hold the secret of a sin anymore and decided to confess. Update. 
Firstly, I want to thank everyone for their ideas and input about my situation. Some people reached out to me on Reddit to chat and state their opinions and we had long talks. They have been incredibly helpful and I want to thank them especially. Some people asked if we went to counseling. Yes, we have been visiting a counselor for over a year now on top of my individual therapy. I understand blowing up a marriage for something that happened 14 years ago is not logical. However, my feelings towards my wife got even worse after counseling and therapy. It started with not being able to trust her, converting to not wanting sex, then not wanting non-sexual gestures, and finally, I am not even comfortable to be in the same space as her. We have been less than roommates in the last couple of months. I do not hate or resent her, but I just cannot shake off the feelings. I would say I forgave her, but it's not about forgiving anymore when there are no feelings in love. I do not want my daughter to grow up in such an environment. I know how hurtful it can be. I experienced a similar situation with my parents, only the genders reversed. Living in such an environment breaks you as a child and teen. I would have much preferred if my mother just divorced my dad instead of staying for my sake. This being said, I had a long talk with my wife this morning. She has not been eating much since visiting the ER, and I am concerned for her well-being and safety. Some Redditors who reached out suggested considering separation before proceeding with a divorce and see if my feelings would change. That is very logical actually. I proposed this idea to my wife and she was happy to hear it. I have an upcoming business trip to the Netherlands next week and I am planning to extend my stay and stay with my sister once I am back. My wife also abruptly suggested a one-side open marriage and I can do what I want on that business trip if it'll save the relationship, make us even, and change my feelings. I rejected it because it has nothing to do with that. Even if it changed something for me, it would devastate her knowing I cheated on her in the future. It's not something easy to get over and not an easy decision. This is all the update. We'll try separation for a while, and depending on the result, I'll make my decision. Thank you all for the help and opinions. So, I don't know about you guys, but I totally understand where OP is coming from, right? Like, yeah, it is a 14-year marriage, but uh, as he so well pointed out, uh, for him, he just feels like he's been cheated on now. Not like it happened 14 years ago for him. For him, it feels like it happened just last week, right? Because he's just learning about it now. And now he was going through the emotional rounds and went through a year of individual and couples therapy. But again, that's 14 years, and I, I'm not trying to invalidate his emotions or anything, because if he doesn't feel like there's love there, then why stay? But at least he's open to the separation thing, and maybe at some point we'll get an update and see what his decision was. But what are your guys' thoughts on this story? Next story. Story number two. Distressing new updates to, am I the a-hole for believing my daughter over a grown man? I don't know if I watch too many crime shows or if I'm just paranoid, so I've come here to ask. Last week, I made chicken gnocchi soup. When it was almost done, I started helping my daughter with a school project. She got us both a bowl, and a few seconds later, my boyfriend runs into the room with a bowl and tells me to eat the bowl he has. I told him it was all the same, and he insisted that he wanted mine because it had more chicken. Thinking back now, I don't know how he would know that, considering my daughter dished it out. My daughter took the bowl he gave me and said she would eat it. He yanked it out of her hand and said, no, it's for mom. I took the bowl and he went to the living room. I continued doing my daughter's project and told her not to eat the soup. 20-ish minutes later, I walked into the kitchen to pour the soups out and he was still eating his. He asked why we didn't eat any and I said the cat got into it while we were waiting for it to cool down. And he screamed, what? Was it your bowl? Cats can't eat that. I told him it was only a lick, but he has been stressed out watching the cat like a hawk, obsessive even. His reaction was very weird. Continuing, these accidents all happened before the soup incident over the span of six months. It wasn't one after another in a short period of time. Since then, my emergency money has gone missing. I keep money hidden just in case. I lost my older sister because she wasn't able to escape a dangerous situation and I literally swore on her grave I would never be in that position. After the soup incident, I went to get my money and it was gone. It was hidden and I changed the location every few months. I asked my daughter if maybe she found it and that if she took it, I wouldn't be mad because I know she couldn't have spent it. She said no. A few hours later, she tells me she forgot, but the other day, her and my boyfriend got pulled over and she saw my pink wallet in his glove box. I did not tell her which wallet it was in or that it was in a wallet. I decided to ask him if he found it by accident. He asked me why I was hiding a large amount of money. Then he said, you know you could never leave me, and then he laughed. He has never said anything like that before. 
I told him it was for my daughter's Christmas. He said no, he didn't find the money, but we could use his credit card for gifts. I didn't tell him about my daughter seeing my wallet in his car. Now here are a few other things that have happened in the past few months that seemed random at the time, but now they don't. I have a severe allergy to latex. One day we were about to have sex and I glanced at the mirror we have by our bed and saw the condom wrapper was a different color. I stopped him because it wasn't latex free and he said it was a mistake and just an older one he had. We have been dating for over two years and he knows how serious my allergy is. My EpiPen that I keep in my room is missing and I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it was missing until I was searching for my money. Another odd thing is one day he was following me down the stairs while I was carrying a laundry and he kicked the back of my leg and I fell. He said he slipped but the stairs are wood and he was wearing his steel toe boots. At the time I thought it was an accident but am I overthinking this? My anxiety has been at an all time high. Do I watch too much true crime? Here is why I think I might be the a-hole. We have a good relationship. He loves my daughter like she is his. We split all shared bills and we both pull our own weight around the apartment. We don't fight. He has never so much as raised his voice at me. We are paycheck to paycheck, but bills are paid. I thought about going to my mom's house for a few days and asking him when I get there when I'm safe about the money, but I don't have money to do that now. She is on a fixed income and can't help. I feel stupid for being scared. Last night I checked his car for my wallet and he caught me. I asked him for my money back and he tried playing dumb. I told him my daughter saw it there. He told me she was lying. I told him I never told her about the money or what wallet. He said he was a grown man and kids lie all the time. I asked him once more for my money and he said I'm not giving it to you, leave me. I waited until he was in the shower to grab my cat and daughter and we left. I can't take my cat with us to a shelter and the DV shelters are full. I was able to get us a night at a cheap motel. This exact situation is why I had money saved. I did everything right and now I'm screwed. I feel like I just blew up my entire life. Now here are some relevant comments. One user said, the red flags here are so obvious. In my defense, the few odd accidents seemed like a genuine accident until the soup thing. It really freaked me out and that is when I started thinking. Then another user said, yeah, the soup incident is very shady. That is what made me start thinking about the other accidents and putting the pieces together. I thought I just watched too many true crime shows, but everyone's responses here have confirmed I'm not just paranoid. Then another user said, in order to believe this, I have to think you are a moron. Like I had to stop reading at the staircase incident. Have you ever accidentally stepped on your dog's foot? Were you trying to kill your dog? No, that is what I thought at the time. It was an accident. Then in the comment section, several people accused the post of being obviously fake because the events escalated too quickly and why would OP be posting on Reddit for advice? I'm not a character in an anonymous freaking story. I wasn't looking for advice, I was looking for confirmation that I wasn't paranoid. You bet your ass I left as soon as he said my daughter was lying. F off. Update post, four days later. The day after we left, he sent me a picture of my EpiPen and tried telling me it was in my nightstand the whole time. I tore that room apart looking for it, so I know for 100% in fact it wasn't there. He took it. He tried getting me to come back home telling me I scared myself stupid and watched too many true crime TV shows. Something didn't feel right, so I told him to put my money and EpiPen in the mailbox. We went back and forth and he denied having my money. He then said, if we broke up, you and Maria, my daughter, are no longer allowed in my apartment and will be treated like trespassers, and sent me a pic of his target practice sheets. I went to the police about the money and was told it was a civil issue. I was upset but wanted the rest of my stuff, so I asked for an escort. Yesterday, I finally got an escort into the apartment with a cop and my landlord. He destroyed everything of my daughter's and he ruined the laptop charger I use for work. No EpiPen. My daughter's medication and backup medical supplies were ruined. Our landlord let me off the lease without having to pay an early termination fee, which is great considering I have no money. Motels are expensive. I don't want to get rid of our cat and all shelters are full and this is scary as hell. I'm sorry this is a terrible update, but I know people wanted it. Now here are some more relevant comments. One user said, there has to be something that can be done about your daughter's meds. 
I am beyond angry that nothing can be done. Insurance won't cover her medications or supplies until next month. She just got refills. I can get her meds, but I'll pay out of pocket, and I have no money. Since I couldn't prove my money existed, I can't prove he stole it. I am livid. Then OP replied to the suggestion of getting a restraining order. Nope, not unless he gets physical with me. I should have let him hit me and I would have had a lot more help available, which is so effed up. Then another user said, why are the police so useless? I wouldn't say useless. I did get a police escort to get the rest of my stuff. Update post number two. I was encouraged to go back to the police station after my last update. On Saturday, December 9th, I went back again. This time, I printed out the threatening text messages that included the target practice sheets he sent. I explained in detail about the accidents proving he was trying to hurt me. And I even had my landlord put in writing that he believed our lives were in danger after seeing everything I was showing the police and let me leave my lease early. I also brought in the destroyed medical supplies and medications. The police said they had already spoken to him and he said he didn't do any of it. He told them my daughter probably destroyed her stuff because she is special ed. She has very mild Asperger's but doesn't destroy things. Since it was his word against mine, they believed him. I didn't have proof he stole the money or that it even existed in the first place. I was told the EpiPen was my responsibility and they won't do anything if it's lost. I was told to let it go and acted like I was bothering the police with my petty civil issues. I am so defeated and angry. My daughter isn't going to have gifts for Christmas because I have to save for a new deposit on an apartment. We have been staying in motels while I was reaching out to DV resources. I can't get help without a restraining order and a police report. Every place is out of funds. He is getting away with everything and I'm so glad we got out because there is no doubt in my mind he would have gotten away with ending my life. I know this sounds like my last update, but this is what happened. Nothing new. No justice. No repercussions for him. He gets to stay in the apartment. My landlord offered me another unit across town, but I can't afford to move in. This exact situation is why I had money stashed away because no one has ever cared about me or us and I knew that. There is nothing else I can do. Edit. All shelters are full. I found an organization who helps DV victims with housing, but only if you have a police report and a restraining order. I guess they are tired of victims going back to their partner or safety reasons or something. I was denied a restraining order because I had no proof. I'm scared, exhausted, and disappointed. Update number three. I thought we were safe. A lot of people wanted an update, so here it is. On Christmas, he slashed my tires, knowing I would have to pay out of pocket to replace them, which I don't have. Today, he threw a heavy patio chair through the window of the place we were staying at to let me know he knew where we were and I was asked to leave for everyone's safety. Except my daughter and I aren't safe. I walked in the sleet and snow with my daughter and our cat and I felt vulnerable and like open prey. So we came back to the police station to sit in the lobby until morning. The shelters are still full and now I have to disclose that he is dangerous anywhere we go. Police couldn't find him, but I know he has to be close. I don't know what his endgame is. Now here are some more relevant comments. One user said, can police direct you to a domestic violence shelter? The shelters here are full, so we are just sitting in the police station lobby. We are at least safe and warm, so I'm grateful for that. Then another user said, OP, what about donations? Donations are not allowed here and my post could get removed because of it. I'm trying to stay awake and really just venting. I'm so frustrated that he keeps getting away with this crap. Then another user said, do you know how he keeps finding you? Have you checked for trackers? I honestly have no idea. He is supposed to have a new girlfriend too, so I don't know why he is messing with me and destroying property. Then another user said, OP, reset your phone to factory settings. I got a cheap burner after we left. He doesn't have my number, nor have I used it to call anyone, so I don't know how he is tracking me. OP, you said he sent you a photo of the EpiPen after you left. How did he communicate that to you? He sent it through my email before I blocked it. Update post number four. I found the air tag in the cat carrier. I checked everywhere I could think of and still couldn't figure out how he was tracking us. I blocked him on everything, including email after he sent me pictures of his target practice sheets, amongst other things. I got a cheap burner phone. My daughter was out of school for winter break, so he didn't follow her or anything. I checked my car for a tracker. Still nothing. I don't have an iPhone, so I couldn't check whatever app an AirTag is attached to. My cat is harness trained and wears a collar, but there was no tracker. 
until today I decided to feel up the carrier. I ran my fingers over every inch of it and felt a bump on the bottom soft side. There was no new stitching or obvious cut. He had used a seam ripper along the stitching. It was undetectable and I almost missed it. He had to have had help because I've never seen him sew anything. Probably the same person who is letting him hide now. If his excuse for the air tag was to track my cat, he would have put it on his collar or harness because that is what he would wear when we go out on walks or car rides. My cat would never go in his carrier unless I was planning on leaving for more than a few days. I had no idea how long it had been there, nor do I know how far the tracker works, but now we aren't safe where we are. Again. I feel disgusting and I feel like a hunted prey. This is so unnerving and I'm so uncomfortable. Who the hell was I living with? Then one user said in the comment section, I'm sorry, but I don't find it believable that he tracked you with an air tag. I don't know how air tags work and didn't say that this is how he is tracking me, just that I found one. It doesn't make sense how he knew where we were. Update post number five. I finally got the restraining order. I'm hoping this update will make everyone as happy as it makes me. I was finally granted the restraining order, and we got the keys to our new apartment on the 11th, a place I can afford monthly and comes partially furnished. It's in a super safe area right by my daughter's school, and there is security. We will spend our time living in the car until then, and of course it has to be snowing, but we are together and we have our cat. This nightmare is almost over. Update post number six. A restraining order did not stop him. This morning he found me. I have been sick as hell, so after I dropped my daughter off at school, I went straight home. I did not drive around to make sure no one was following me. I messed up. He broke my nose and shattered my orbital bone. He is in jail now. Sorry for this update, y'all. Edit. Staying in the hospital for the night. I was pretty sick before this happened. My daughter is with a friend for the night. My landlord fixed the door as best he could and told me my cat wasn't in the apartment, so I'm worried sick. I thought this was over. I'm so, so tired. I'm sure his mom will bail him out. Why can't he just move on? He took my money and my peace. What more can he take until he is satisfied? Then in the comment section, one user said, please pull your daughter out of her school and leave the state ASAP. I so wish I could do this, but we just moved into a new place. I should have just stayed with my mom. She lives in another state, but I didn't want to disrupt my daughter's life too much. I have $3 to my name, so I can't leave. And then another user said in the comment section, you often can break leases without penalties in domestic violence situations. My previous landlord let me out of my lease without a penalty, and my new one will too. I just can't afford to move. Update post number seven. Not being able to move even if my life depends on it. I know the importance of having money saved and I live within my means. How many of us is one disaster away from losing everything? A fire, job loss, a bank screw up, a late paycheck, illness, or someone stealing from you? I had money saved because I knew that any one of those things could happen to me and I wouldn't have had anyone who could help me out. And it did happen. Two months ago, my ex tried poisoning me and stole the money I had saved. It's been hell since. I was able to break my lease and leave, and I went to my mom's over Christmas break, but I came back because I didn't want to disrupt my daughter's schooling, and I underestimated my ex. I was able to get an apartment through DV services very quickly, which was a miracle. I know how hard it is to find housing and then try to come up with all the deposits for a new place. But I did it. The cards fell in my favor. But then I effed up. On Friday, I took my daughter to school and wasn't diligent. I will usually drive around to make sure I'm not being followed. To be honest, I started feeling crazy, paranoid, and angry I was wasting gas. Plus, I have pneumonia and strep that I haven't been able to pay the biotics for, so I just went home to bed. He found me and broke my nose, shattered my orbital bone, and I have a concussion. I had a restraining order and he was arrested. I shared this on another subreddit and everyone told me to leave, move, and run. Except I can't do that. It's hard trying to explain that to people for them to understand because it sounds like excuses. Like I like living in fear or something. I can't pull money out of thin air. My credit card is maxed out. I contacted DV services at the hospital and because I just got help, I can't get it again. The thing I didn't know about abusive men is that they don't just move on or stop. There are DV shelters, but they are full. I wish people would understand that I know how serious this is, but money doesn't grow on trees, even if a life depends on it. Then in the comments section, one user said, will your parents really not help you? I only have my mom who lives out of state. She is on a fixed income, so she can't help me. We would stay with her, but at this point, I'm out of luck and nothing worth a damn to sell. 
And then another user said in the comment section, OP, you need to disappear. Honestly, how? I'm not going to get anywhere on foot. Update post number eight. He was with me to get my daughter. It all makes sense now. In my first post, I said how we had a normal relationship and he was never abusive, controlling, never raised his voice. The money that he ended up stealing was money I had hidden since before he moved in. I was not hiding money to get away from him. I was not afraid of him. I lost my sister to domestic violence and swore I'd never let that happen to me, only to end up in the same exact situation. We didn't have the spectacular love that was filled with insane chemistry. Nowhere near a love of my life situation, which is why I was so confused by how desperate he got. After he got arrested, his mom went on social media and ranted because I got her baby locked up and knew we were sleeping in my car so was telling her followers that if they find me to call her. Very bold and insane. One of my ex's friends saw this and commented, I don't know if you should be sticking up for him. He needs serious help. I don't know how I caught it before it was deleted, but I reached out to him on my fake Facebook. Every time they were drinking, he would talk about her and then laugh it off. It made his friends uncomfortable, but they chalked it up to the booze. Two weeks ago, when my daughter came to see me in the hospital, she was distraught. It made sense because I looked like hell, but she kept repeating over and over, asking me why he did this to me. I think there was more to this, and I'm frightened to my core. Remember, he stole my EpiPen and money, but he destroyed almost everything of hers, and I don't understand it because she had nothing to do with the breakup. Why did he destroy her medicine? Why did he destroy her clothes? Why? Don't abusers threaten their victim into not saying anything or something is going to happen to someone or something they love? I am sick to my stomach even writing that out. I don't know where to go from here. How do I even begin a conversation about this with her? We are safe. I'm not worried about him finding us because he is still in jail, which is great because I'm out of money. He wasn't desperate and crazy because he was losing me. I think it was because of her. Update post number nine. My ex is getting bailed out tomorrow. I'm so angry and scared. I wish I had faith in the justice system and with cops because they are supposed to protect, right? Except that isn't always the case. I'm tired of being hurt and I'm tired of being scared. Anxiety is on 100. It's exhausting fearing for my daughter and I's life. Update post number 10. How can I feel safer at home? I know a lot of people are following my posts and will be disappointed in hearing that my ex was bailed out. I'm still healing from when he broke my nose and shattered my orbital bone. I know a restraining order is just a piece of paper because he ignored it when I was attacked and the police aren't going to save me. For security, I only have a door bar that slides under the knob. I don't have a ring camera and I can't buy a pew pew until I have a few extra funds. He made me sell it a year ago because he was uncomfortable with it being in the house. Another red flag I missed. My question is, what can I do to feel safer that doesn't require money? Every night my daughter and I push the couch in front of the door, but I'm worried that if there is a fire, we can't get out. I have myself worried sick to the point of painful stomach ulcers. I tried talking to my nearest neighbor, but when I started explaining my situation and how it would be great if she could let me know if she sees anyone around my apartment, she got weirded out, which I understand. Just look Looking for some peace of mind. Will that ever exist in my life again? Update post number 11. Am I the a-hole or was this just a mistake? I know this is all I post about, and if you want more context, you can read my past posts. I feel like I need to tell someone what is happening so that it makes it feel real, and that I'm not just crazy and upset for nothing. My ex got out on bail last week. My daughter and I already left the new apartment we had moved into after he attacked me. My daughter's school knows about my situation and knows I have a restraining order. Today, my daughter got a call from the front office at school. The secretary told her that the pickup car had changed from mine to a new car. She was being told this so that when school let out, she wouldn't get upset when she didn't see my car. The new car is the same one as my ex's. It is a rare car slash color and she told me she knew it was his car. She did not say anything to the secretary or her teacher because she was instantly scared. It breaks my heart that she was in fear because she thought he had gotten me and was going to get her. She was given the message hours before school let out so she spent all that time worrying. The last 10 minutes of the day is when the kids can use the bathroom and clean up. She started crying in front of her whole class and when the bell rang she refused to leave her classroom. I was in the carpool line when I caught a call from her teacher. I I have never seen her so upset and that is saying a lot because she was so upset when she visited me in the hospital. Face beat red, hyperventilating, snot everywhere. She had cried so hard she got a nosebleed. After they told me what happened, I was livid. It all sounded like BS because the secretary never should have relayed the message without talking to me first, and she said it was a male on the phone. As soon as the secretary looked my daughter up to find out which room to call, she should have seen the message I thought I had said saying no one should have ever picked her up but me. No information should have ever been released. 
Then I was told, he was never in contact with her, so it's not that big of a deal. It was a mistake. All he had to give her was a full name and what grade she was in to get a message to her. They said that to me with a straight face, while the bruises he gave me were very visible, proving he is a violent man. I am so effing angry. She told me she knew I didn't get a new car because as much as I try to hide it from her, she knows I'm broke. She thought she was going to have to go with him. She's been so traumatized and I don't know what to do. She wants to switch to e-learning, but since it's not a medical reason and not a school-wide restriction, I would have to pay to rent the laptop, which I obviously can't. The school is calling it an innocent mistake and didn't even apologize. I know I'm the only one responsible for my daughter and I's safety, but dang, if people could stop jeopardizing it like it's nothing and then acting like I'm the a-hole for being upset because it was a mistake. He wasn't there after school, but he could have been. Oh my goodness, that was a whole saga of updates and grief and ridiculousness from the ex-boyfriend's behalf and just a terrible situation all around. Uh, there were some comments at the start that were a little hesitant on if this were true or not, so I'm curious if you guys think this one is real. Um, assuming it is, I, I mean, what do you say? I, I think it's evidently obvious that she is struggling times 10. She's broke. She can't really leave the, the state or the city or anything like that. And then her mom is in another state away, and it seems like mom can't help. And then the ex-boyfriend is, like, just... I don't know, on it apparently. Also, there were some people in the comment section thinking that OP's ex was a police officer, but that doesn't really seem confirmed anywhere, but it's definitely a possible theory. But um, I don't know, I, I, I don't really know what to ask here because there's just so much. So I'm just curious what your guys' thoughts are on all of this or what you have to say because I, I feel for this lady and you know, he's tracking her and hitting her and she somehow, yeah, how did he abuse her, like ass assault her? How is he still not in jail, oh my goodness. But anyway, guys, uh, that was a long story. We had one story and then two. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye.